visuals that the world is fed with about Africa by the international media are those of chaos, despondency, wars, famine, disease, drought, and other disasters. The natural, lush, beautiful, picturesque, and breathtaking scenes of peace and tranquility never seem to catch the lens of the international press. Welcome to Ghana, the capital of Pan-Africanism, the seat of ancient and sophisticated black kingdoms and civilization. A country which in no uncertain terms told its colonizers that it preferred freedom in danger to servitude in tranquility. The first black African country to attain independence and spearhead the decolonization process of the African continent. Ghana, which is approximately the size of Great Britain, is fast earning the accolade Gateway to Africa. The country whose motto is freedom and justice. Freedom and justice for all, regardless of race, creed, sex, social or ethnic origin. the numerous holiday resorts in the country where visitors and citizens alike converge to relax and have a good time is the La Beach Resort. This occasion however is different. It is special. Rita Mali is in town. Not only Rita Mali but also hundreds of black brothers and sisters from the diaspora have arrived. All have returned to the motherland to take part in the first Emancipation Day celebration on the African continent. The day has its origins on the 1st of August, 1834, when the British government, by an act of parliament, abolished slavery and slave trading in all its colonies. Emancipation Day is commemorated principally in the Caribbean countries. During a state visit to the Caribbean, President Rawlings took part in Emancipation Day celebrations in Jamaica. President Rawlings paid tribute to the memory of Marcus Garvey, a strong advocate for the repatriation to the motherland, and Paul Bogle, who was hanged for leading an uprising against slavery. Emancipation Day celebrates the abolition of chattel slavery where one human being could be regarded as the property of another and authoritatively marks the beginning of the struggle to regain total independence, affirmation of true identity, self-reliance and the restoration of the dignity of the African race. This trip to Jamaica by President Rawlings culminated in the celebration of the event in Ghana. Kotoka International Airport, Accra. History is being made. Ghana awaits the return of the skeletal remains of two slave ancestors of Ghanaian origin from Jamaica and the United States of America. Powered government delegation, including Nana Udro Numapao, President of the National House of Chiefs, the Minister for Tourism, Honorable Mike Gizzo, his deputy, Honorable Uru Kwamofa, who is Chairman of the Emancipation Day Planning Committee, and Mr. Kobi Kumsen, Ghana's ambassador to the U.S., are at the airport to welcome the remains and the accompanying delegations from Jamaica and the U.S. the 
delegation from the U.S. is Mr. Sonny Carson, Minion Phillips, leader of the delegation, which brings home the remains from Jamaica. Mr. Carson is a direct descendant of one of the slave ancestors whose remains are today being brought from the United States for reinterment in Ghana. The two remains were identified as Ghanaians by experts from Jamaica and the United States. The bigger coffin contains the remains of John Carson, the ancestor from the U.S., while the smaller coffin contains the remains of Crystal from Jamaica. John Carson, who died at the age of 30 in 1845, was killed while fighting in the U.S. Navy in the war against Mexico. Crystal, a former house help from St. Anne in Jamaica, starved to death in 1670 at the age of 80. Her remains were among those of four individuals excavated by a team of anthropologists and archaeologists from the Syracuse University Maxwell School of Anthropology in association with the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. We give thanks and praises to the Almighty for your safe return. The first point of call is the Du Bois Memorial Center for Pan-Africanism. Our souls would have shrunk and our spirits shriveled. Our manhood would have withered and our wombs warped if we had forgotten Africa. But we remembered always that homeland, considered often its simpler joys. And with unfettered hearts and unshackled minds, told our freedom in lullabies. And the words of our swollen lips, and the meditations of our burdened hearts, seemed acceptable in God's sight. On this occasion of Emancipation Day, the Vice President, Professor John Atta Mills, on behalf of government and the people of Ghana, honors the memory of Dr. Nkrumah and Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. Emancipation did not end with abolition of slavery. Great Pan-Africanists like Dr. Du Bois, Dr. Nkrumah, George Padmore, and Marcus Garvey sought to unite and uplift the dignity and the image of Africans the world over. Marcus Garvey's advocacy for repatriation to the motherland is today more relevant than ever before. And what better platform to re-echo it than on Emancipation Day? We can now move forth into a pan-African reality, but that reality must be based upon...